Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, it's Motivational Monday. It's another Monday, and it's good to be with you. Hope you had an awesome week last week. Hope all went well. Uh, I want you to know that uh, I'm not really sure what, I think this is salmon, but Cheryl Popple commented to me that I always wear orange shirts on Monday morning, so I'm shaking it up. Now, last week, because I was on my way to Columbus uh, for memorial service, I had a you know shirt and tie on. Don't expect shirt and ties. OK, but it's Monday morning T-shirt. I think this is salmon. You know, uh, it's a T-shirt that my son gave me when we watch their dog, when they go to someplace exotic. You know, they go on vacation. We watch the dog and I get a T-shirt. There you go. So uh, but uh, anyway, it's good to be with you. Hey, this morning we have Cal Corey Mallory with us. Corey is uh, currently a professor at the University of Dayton. Uh, she will tell you, uh, her background's engineering, but she can tell you exactly what classes or what her title is. Uh, if you are able to join us online or in person, then Corey uh, is involved in our contemporary worship. She sings, awesome voice. She does the introductions, uh, does a great job. And uh, so uh, being that it's Women's History Month, you know, I'm... Uh, going to uh, uh, interview some women. That's a novel idea, isn't it? So uh, anyway, Corey, thanks for being with us this morning. And uh, so just to get things rolling, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? While many will know you, there'll be those that do not, okay? <laughs> okay, sounds good. So my full name, I'm just going to get this out of the way, is Corrine Mowry. Most people want to pronounce it Corinne. And that's why I say, eh, just call me Corey, because most people can pronounce that without any problem. Spelling it, different problem. But pronouncing it, just call me Corey. Hi, nice to meet you. Um, as Pastor Jim said, I'm an assistant professor at the University of Dayton in the Engineering Management Systems and Technology Department. I've been there for full time for two years. I adjunct for a full year before that. Um, it's, it's really actually a fabulous place to work. Um, it's the first place that I've ever worked. UD is a, a, a Catholic, a private Catholic university. Um, it's very inclusive, very diverse campus, but everything is based on faith. So it's the, it's the first place I've ever worked at. We begin every meeting, every meeting from department to school to university, right? Every meeting with prayer. So it's just, it's awesome to be in a community of faith. Um, I got my undergraduate at OSU, go Bucks. Uh, in civil engineering, quickly figured out that civil engineering was not the choice for me. Of course, I did this over the course of working um, for a consulting agency. And then when the recession hit, I unfortunately lost my job. But this is one of those blessings in a disguise sort of thing. Um, because I, 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 I'm not built for construction. This is not my passion. It was, it was um, something I did for a paycheck. Um, I, it was it was really crazy because I had just started this prayer. My father had sent me. And I can't remember word for word, but but essentially the gist was, you know, this job does not define me, Lord. Use me in the way that you need me to. Um, let me do the best I can at this job. But I remember really that you're the one in control, right? And so I get laid off, and and it's a huge blow to your ego. But you know, in retrospect, I realized that was just the first step in redirecting my path, right? So I get laid off. I spent a couple of months trying to figure out what I really want to do in my life. And I decided to go back to school. I went to Wright State. I got my master's degree in industrial systems engineering. And then I eventually got a PhD um, in engineering with a specialty in industrial systems. So um, it's been a crazy ride. Um, it's definitely not the path I thought I was going to take. It's not the life I thought I was going to lead. It's definitely um, a, a path that was laid out for me. Um, but it's, it's, I'm, I'm happy where I'm at. I'm, I'm very happy with what I'm doing. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm hoping, actually, I know, you know there's more coming. I don't know what it's going to be, but I know there's more in store, right? right. So, um, okay. So I know one of, like, one of the things that um, you want to talk about, one of the things we want to talk about, this idea of women. And I kind of want to take an opportunity to thank some women that have been important in my life. And, and I'm not at all saying 
that men have not helped me out along the way. There are a lot of great men, and I'll include my father and my brother in that group, tons of mentors, friends, um, even bosses who've helped me along the way. But, um, pastors, you know, I'm a big don't forget <laughs> pastors. Pastors, right. Senior pastors, junior pastors, um, warehouse directors, um, <laughs> tons of great men. But I, like for me, there's a difference. Now I can't, I can't speak for men. I've never been one. But I feel like I can kind of speak for for me and maybe for some women. And and um, you know, there's there's something special about being in communion with fellow women, about being in fellowship with fellow women, um, people who who know what you're going through. Um, and, and sometimes I feel like, I don't know about you, but I feel like I take for granted sometimes the amount of help and the amount of love that we give to each other. We just kind of take it for granted. Like you're always there. You're always there to lean on. You're always there to give support. And I think it's good every now and then to, to specifically call some people out and say thank you. Um, and even if these people don't see this post or, or, or hear these words, I think it's important for us to periodically take a moment to say, you know, you help me. And this, you know, we're celebrating women this month. I figure this is as good a time as any. It's just like, I love my mom every day of the week, but I'm still going to do something special for our Mother's Day. Okay, so I just thought, let, maybe I'll just call out some people. And I, you know, this idea of what, what, what's been my path, what's been my journey in life, um, which has always been, I believe, guided by God. But who are the specific women who have come along to help me in the times where I really needed another woman to help, right? And the first and foremost, you can't start off anything like that without acknowledging your mom, right? So I don't even know how to describe. I can't even put into words. I think we all, all of us understand the, the power and the amount of love and the help and this, the, the unconditional um, love and, and feeling and support that mothers give. So my mother was definitely, she is, she is the standard. She is the rule in my life that I compare almost everything to. And she's a, an amazing person. She worked throughout her life. She was a, a registered nurse in the United States Air Force. Um, ironically, both of my parents were active duty. My mom was the one who was sent overseas during Desert Storm. <laughs> so um, she's been a, a, a great role model on what it's like to uh, be a working mom and, and how, do you, how do you instill love and, and courage and support into your children um, while also being a professional. So I, I will always thank my mom. I think another key woman who has really come and helped me throughout my life, again, this is kind of a given, right? You're expecting this. It would be my sister. She's my little sister. She's technically younger than me. I like to say that I look younger than her. She's going to argue that point. But she is, this, she is this awesome person who never gives herself enough credit. Um, Life is, has given her a couple of blows in life, and this girl comes back swinging. She has never been knocked out. She is a, an eternal source of strength, and she has always been the person that I think of. When I'm like in a hard situation, I'm like, what would Marty do right now? How would Marty approach this situation? She didn't take crap from anybody. She's like, here's my job, and these are my responsibilities, and I'm going to make sure I get them done. And she has been a source of inspiration. But beyond mom and sister, right, there have been a ton of other women who have supported me in life. And, and what I think we need to acknowledge is that different people come into our lives, different phases of our lives, right? Mm -hmm. I really wanted to come in here and I wanted to tell you, oh, I've been so inspired by Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Oprah Winfrey and all these big names, right? And the reality is I really could care less. Those are fabulous women. Those are awesome women who accomplish so much in their lives. But the people who jump out at me, I don't sit around and think, what would Oprah do in this situation? Never have, right? So as, as I've grown, you know, we, we all start off young. We, we, we idolize and we love and we cherish our mothers. And as we become older adults, their relationship with us starts to change. And we, and we start broadening our scopes before we just need you know, the, the love and encouragement of your family. And then as you become an adult, you start to realize that you also need love and encouragement from your community. And so I also like to thank some of my best friends that I've had forever, one since high school, one since college, Laura Cathcart and Melissa Davis um, have been amazing sources of support throughout my life. They know my history. 
They've seen me at my worst. Like literally we lived together in college. They have seen me when I look my worst. They have been with me when I've been um, going through hard times. Um, they're awesome people. And I really, I really look to their example when I start thinking about what does loyalty, what does loyalty mean? What does true friendship mean? What is unconditional love outside of a, of a child parent relationship? What does that look like? And they've really been um, a good um, inspiration and an excellent example of that in my life. Um, so when I was younger, it was my parents. When I was in college, you know, I started, it was, it was my peer groups. It was my friends. It was my best friends who helped me out. And then at some point we graduate college and we start, you know, we have to be adults. We start adulting, right? And, and I feel like it's really, it wasn't until I lost my job that I actually started finding a community of women to help support me as I became the person I think that God is intending me to be. Um, it wasn't until I was in grad school that I really had interactions with another female engineer, which is crazy. Because we want to think that everything is equal opportunity, but the reality is that women in STEM are just a small pro pro proportion, small proportion of the total number of people in STEM. And so even though I had some classes with other women when I was in college, I never actually came into contact with another female professional until I was at Wright State in grad school. And uh, Dr. Jenny Gallimore was on my dissertation committee, and I worked on some research projects with her. And you, you just don't understand how much you need to see somebody who looks like you succeeding until you see somebody who looks like you succeeding. And so she was an, is still an amazing source of information. She's currently uh, the Dean, I think, College of Technology up at Bowling Green. So to see somebody who looks like me, to be successful was, is, a, is an amazing source um, of inspiration. And, and I kind of use that to, to say out to you, I, again, lots, tons of men, lots of men who have been super supportive and helped me grow as a per person and grow in my faith. Um, but whether you're a man or a woman, understand that for some people, it's just seeing what you do and seeing how you do it well and seeing how you do it as a child of God. That is the inspiration that they need, the support that they need to to make it through tough times or to um, complete a, a hard project or to, to find the strength that they need to move forward when things are difficult. Um, I've also got an amazing group of colleagues. I had a job that I hated, I hated it. And I have a job now that probably has the same level of stress, but because of what I do and specifically who I work for, it's an awesome place. So I really wanna give a shout out to um, Sharon Bomer, Dr. Sharon Bomer, Dr. Kelly Schneider, Dr. Sandy Furter, this group of women who really came along when I was new, I'm still new, I'm still considered junior faculty, came along and, and have been excellent at guiding me through a process that they know is stressful for anybody. Um, but when you're, a, when you're a mother and when you're a wife and when you work an hour away from your office, you know, these are extra levels of stress and they've really come alongside me and supported me um, and, and really helped me out. Let's see, so those are a lot of names that you probably aren't familiar with um, and that's okay. I, I, I don't have any problem introducing you to some awesome people in my life. Um, but about 15 years ago, uh, yeah, about 15 years ago, I moved to Urbana, Ohio. Um, and around that time, I started going to the Urbana United Methodist Church and there are some pretty amazing people in the congregation. Way more people than I have time to call out right now, but I wanted to call out some people by name. Is that okay with you, Pastor Jim? Sure, go for it. Okay. So, like, first and foremost, Chris Harmison is an amazing welcome lady. Like, if it wasn't for her, I would have never found my way to the church. She walked me through the first day, the first couple of weeks she was there. She introduced me to choir. Um, she really made me feel like um, I was part of a community, and she has... Uh, both her and her husband have been very present in my family's life. They're amazing people. And, you know, I don't know if I've ever said thank you to her, but like, I, I wouldn't have this faith community if she hadn't stepped along and she hadn't been that person who said, come to our church. Let me take you around. Let me show you our church. Let me introduce you to our people. You don't understand how much some people just need that invitation. And you know what? Sometimes they need that invitation 
once or, or twice or maybe seven times before they come. But it's still important that you have to invite people into this community of support and love, right? Um, after that, let's see. When I, like where I'm currently at, I think we've all, I think we've all had some very interesting moments during COVID. I know that I've had some struggles, struggles with working at home as a professional and having my children at home with me um, during these times. Um, Caitlin Simmons and Becca Donnell. I don't think they understand how much that I kind of leaned on them. But when I think of unconditional love, and I mean unconditional because I can be pretty opinionated and maybe it doesn't always come out as a nice person being opinionated, but a, an incredibly stressed out person who's opinionated, they have been nothing, nothing but love and support. I understand where you're coming from. Girl, me too, me too, I got you. You know, when, when we were on um, quarantine, Caitlin was the only person who reached out and offered to bring us McDonald's. And let me tell you, that is important. When you're not allowed to leave your house for two weeks, all of a sudden that cheeseburger and fries is looking really good. And, and Caitlin just like, she's like, let me get this for you. And I'm like, thank you. Thank you so much. These are, those are awesome women. I also like to thank, um, sorry, uh, um, I'm sorry, I'm almost saying kids' names instead of their parents. Andrea Holland and uh, Molly Meadows. These women, it, it sounds weird, but like they give you permission to be human. Like you can just fall apart and show your worst selves. You know, like, I know you sent me a text. I'm going to be honest. I completely ignored it because I was just not in the right place to respond. And they're like, it's cool. I understand if you need anything, you know, I'm always here. And I'll admit that I'm not always reaching out for the help, but to know that you have people who are willing to listen, people who are willing to forgive you for just kind of being a jerk some days, I think it's pretty awesome. It, it's pretty awesome. Um, let's see, other names. Sibby DeWitt, Shannon Beard, and Lindsay Hess. These are the three women that I do the pay it forward sale with. And there is nothing more empowering, nothing that's gonna give you more confidence than, than meeting up with a group of women and accomplishing something um, that's huge, right? That's almost, I don't wanna say it's seemingly impossible, but something that's a lot of effort, right? A lot of effort that we just come together and we're like, no barrier is gonna hold us down. We got together, we're like, we need to do something for a community. We need, like, we know what our troubles are and other women, other families in the community have to be having the same troubles as we are. Like kids are expensive. And, and a lot of us, you know, we're kind of in the same boat. You, you, young families, new moms, um, and kids are most expensive when they're little. Like, how do we make this manageable? Not only how do we make it manageable for ourselves, how do we make it manageable for other people in the community, maybe even people who aren't as fortunate as us? And so we came together. Do you know how hard it is? Seriously, do you know how hard it is to find a building and to develop an entire system and to not just buy racks, but design and build racks. Okay, okay, I'll give you, a, I didn't design and build it. I just happened to be married to the person who's really awesome at doing those kinds of things, right? But the, these are still, th these are, this is a huge list of tasks of things you have to do to put on, a, on an event like a consignment sale, which is effectively what it is. Um, but to make life affordable for the community, to do your best to give back to community, man, these are, these are a group of amazing women, amazing working women who said, you know what? There's so much more that we can do. And, and, and so to be with a group of women, we come together, we, we talk to each other, we talk about real life struggles. We talk about you know kids and what it's like to raise kids who once were babies, now they're turning into teenagers. You know, we talk about the frustrations with our own professional jobs, um, had the stresses of being both a wife, uh, a mother, and then, oh yeah, by the way, having full-time jobs and wanting to, to give back to our community and wanting to raise excellent and beautiful people. Um, you can't do that alone. We're not meant to do that alone. And again, it's not so much about needing to be around people. Sometimes you need to be around people who look like you, um, people who have had similar experiences. And so it's, it's again, lots of men out there, fabulous men, wonderful men, wonderful pastors, senior pastors, junior pastors, husbands, fathers, mentors. 
Um, but sometimes we got to stop and, and it's, you know, why not? Why not during this month that we're celebrating women, call out those specific women, um, all of whom have different strengths, right? Different strengths, um, different, different gifts given to them and thank them for, for the impact and, and the roles that they've played um, in helping you through hard times and in, in laughing with you through happy times and supporting you through hard times in you know healing you and comforting you through sad times. I mean, it's it's always good to thank people. So I just wanted to take that what like last half hour or so. Um, that was not an inclusive list at all. And I apologize profusely if I did not say your name. You are still a hundred percent important, and you you matter, and you make an impact. Um, but those are some that are just off the top of my head that I really. I've decided this year, I'm gonna take much more effort to start thanking people. When I see something that I that that inspires me, that strengthens me, um, that helps me, I wanna thank people and let them know, hey, do you know that when I see you sitting in an ad council meeting and you make a really good point, that actually inspires me to be a better person. When I see you volunteering and serving at church, you're actually showing me the kind of person that I want to be. And so there, there are times in my life where I get stuck. Somebody's, op somebody's offering me an opportunity. You don't know anything like that, Pastor Jim, people who offer tons of opportunities. And I have to start and think, is this something I want to do? And, and, and these are the moments where I start thinking, you know, what would, you know, such and such person do? How would they react in the situation? I, and, and, yeah, I, I think I could go on and on, but maybe maybe now's a good time to stop. What do you think? <laughs> well, I, I appreciate you, uh, you know, doing your, uh, your, your list of people that have impacted your life on Women's History Month. Those are people who've made history in your life. People are still making history, Absolutely. if you will. And uh, I, now I know where you get your spunkiness from. It's your sister. So, uh, uh, so there you go. And here I always yeah. thought it was your mom. So man, that I never knew your mom was in uh, Desert Storm and was an Air Force nurse. So that's, that's, that's pretty incredible. Yeah. I'm sure you've got a lot of stories you could tell about her experiences and uh, how uh, her uh, uh, commitment to uh, God and country and family have impacted mm -hmm. you in, in many, many, many ways. So that is really awesome. And um, the um, the only thing I'd like to just as we wind it up here is, uh, uh, you know, you, you're, Corey, you're making, or should I say Dr. Corrine, uh, one R, two Ns. <laughs> uh, you are, you are making history. I mean, uh, in your, in the, arena of education and the department of engineering uh through your ministry here at the church um and uh i'm sure i don't know i'm just guessing that maybe i kind of told you this ahead of time that maybe you've got like this life verse or this passage that you know that's your go-to uh or just one of your favorite passages so if you were to narrow it down to that life verse that favorite impact scripture what would that be I, I actually pulled it up on my phone so that i could make sure i was correct or, or precise um hold on it's loading again oh good sorry my phone's down to one percent it's cool it's no problem <laughs> we'll all get through this before it officially dies uh, i don't know if it's cliche but it's it's the one passage that i always come back to um and it's ecclesiastes 3 Oh, there goes my phone. It, it, but it's like it's like all of Ecclesiastes three, and it's it's um, it's the passage that says to everything there is a season and a purpose to everything under heaven, and then it goes through the whole list. Um, you know, there's there's a, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to laugh and a time to cry, a, a time to grow and a time to harvest. It's 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 the whole list of of seasons in a person's life. And it's really what it's laying out. And it's a constant reminder that um, it's okay to be happy and even in the times where you feel like you should be experiencing grief or even the times where every, everybody else seems to be falling apart. It's okay. 
this might be your season to be happy. And the same thing, it's okay to have times of sadness. It's okay to be sad. There are going to be times in your life where it's your turn. It's your season to be sad. There are going to be times of growth. There are going to be times where you are going to be learning. There are going to be times where you're going to be tested. And then there are going to be times where you are supposed to be doing the testing. Mm -hmm. There are going to be times where you're supposed to be applying everything you learned in your growth season, right? And, And it's really just this constant reminder that everything is designed to happen, right? Everything is going to happen in its time, in its season. If you're in a time of sadness, it's okay to be sad. Know that it's just a season of your life. There will be other seasons. If you feel like, you know, you're, you're, you're sick and tired of being at the bottom of the ladder, right? Know that this is just a season. You're in a season of growth. God will move you into a position that he wants you to be in after you've gone through this season of growth right? We all start as the junior something or other, and then we work our way up to the top. We all have happy days. We have sad days. And so I just, I appreciate the constant reminder that you're not stuck in any one spot. It's it's okay to dance. It's okay to laugh. It's okay to cry. It's okay to be angry. There's a time for war and there's a time for peace, right? And and just, just appreciating that Things, things come in seasons. So th- I'd say that's probably, I don't know if you call it a life verse because it's like all of it. It's not one specific spot, but um, it's, it's what I always return to. It's time and again, it's what I fall back on, you know. All right. Well, that's awesome. Uh, like you said, there, life is full of serendipitous uh, actions and experiences and uh, it covers the gamut uh ecclesiastes 3 is is you know they should even write a song about that uh maybe i should tell somebody uh maybe they did in the 60s or was it the 70s i don't know well, <laughs> wait i mean you he'll, weren't he'll even talk. born then were you in the 60s <laughs> that's right you oh, weren't I even was. born then <laughs> oh I, I wasn't born in the 60s no. <laughs> I did get a shock this last weekend when I realized I was older than somebody who I didn't think I was. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm not as young as I'd like to think. Well, I, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not as young as I, I think I am. Yeah. But. <laughs> well, I always think I'm younger than I really am until I uh, try to lift something that I used to be able to and then pay for it for the next two right. weeks, you know, hey. so. You never realize how old you are until you're standing in a class of 20 something year olds asking, like throwing them out movie quotes that they just kind of look at you blank, like, huh? Yeah, so yeah. the class that I'm teaching right now, I'm pretty sure none of them were alive when Men in Black was in theaters. <laughs> yes, well, there you go. Uh, what can we say? Uh, <laughs> so, uh, uh, well, listen, hey, uh, Corey, it's uh, very good to have have you with me today as we uh, talk about Women's History Month and the women that have impacted your life. Uh, thank you for impacting many lives, my life and many others. Uh, keep up the good work. And thank so you. everybody, hey, uh, Jim Lillibridge, one of the pastors here at Urbana United Methodist Church. Glad to have uh, Dr. Corrine Mowry uh, with us today. And uh, so I hope you have an awesome week. Uh, Remember, God loves you. We love you. And uh, hope to see you next Monday uh, when I talk with who knows who. So you want to come back just to find out. So, hey, uh, again, God bless and have an awesome week. Take care.